Welcome to our Government Year in Review 2023. This year flew by so quickly for all of us, but in the last 12 months, a lot has been done. And this series takes a look at each ministry briefly dissecting their accomplishments and self-evaluating our performance as a government as we continue to work towards our required goals and your expectations. So stay with us as we take you through this series. The Ministry of Education's vision for education throughout Trinidad and Tobago is informed by a number of policies. Digital and cultural transformation policies, vocational, lifelong learning and life skills development policies. Much progress has been made in achieving the vision of modern, relevant, quality, equitable education, transforming our youth into ideal citizens. Let's see. At the Ministry of Education in 2023, we have focused on providing modern, relevant, quality, equitable education for all. This is the underpinning of our education policy 2023-27 to and we toured the country in September going to different communities to explain just how we are going to work on the issues that confront education in 2023 and beyond. A big part of this is our cultural education policy, and this has begun to be implemented in 2023. We are offering every child at every school the opportunity to have experiences that will develop 21st century skills in all of our learners. Another major pinnacle of the Ministry of Education's work in 2023 is remedial education in 126 schools. 80 primary schools, 26 secondary schools. And we have worked with these schools and we continue to deepen our relationship with them to provide resources that will allow the students in these schools the opportunity to transform into productive citizens and to have greater academic achievement. And not only academic, but also achievement across the spectrum as we seek to develop the ideal Trinidad and Tobago citizen with holistic education. We also focus, as we are speaking about holistic education and transformation, on our collaboration with MILAT through the Ministry of Youth Development and National Service. And this allows us to take students who need that extra support and put them into an environment which can transform them into productive citizens. We want each of our students to transform into these ideal Trinidad and Tobago citizens. And this collaboration is essential to achieve that outcome. Come. So at the Ministry of Education, we have been focused and we continue to retain focus on this vision, achieving this vision of modern, relevant, quality and equitable education for all. The Ministry of Health has done a lot of work of which we are all very proud. Having successfully taken us through the pandemic, the Ministry continues to strengthen the provision of health service delivery and governance with specific focus on the modernization of the health sector. Minister De Singh gives us a more detailed summary of the Ministry's accomplishments in 2023. Looking back over the year 2023 as your Minister of Health gives me great pride as I reflect on the accomplishments of the Ministry of Health. We have placed focus on the modernization of the health sector by strengthening service delivery, governance and leadership to improve the health status of the population of Trinidad and Tobago. Over the past year, the Ministry focused its efforts on four key strategic priority areas. One, the prevention, treatment and care of non-communicable diseases to aid citizens in their journey towards healthier lifestyles. Two, the decentralization of mental health services. Three, the ongoing transformation of our national blood transfusion service to a voluntary, non-remunerated blood donation system. And four, the attainment of our 95-95-95 HIV-AIDS UN targets. The Ministry has adopted a life course approach to 
the treating with NCDs that will benefit the population at large as we move towards a healthier population with the responsibility for overseeing the implementation of activities related to the national policy and strategic plan for the prevention and control of NCDs via the whole of government and whole of society approach. With this committee formed, the Ministry hosted the National NCD Symposium on June 24, 2023, with the aim to facilitate a collaborative and informed approach among stakeholders in addressing the NCD challenge in Trinidad and Tobago. The Ministry spearheaded its health and wellness festivals, which were facilitated across the country by each regional health authority to boost public education and awareness of NCDs, while providing access to personal screening and counseling with healthcare professionals. This activity is geared towards screening, prevention, and linkage to care. Using the live course approach, the NCD program and services implemented included the Pre-Pregnancy Planning for Diabetes and Pregnancy program, which was launched in 2018, the development and implementation of our breastfeeding policy and the achievement of the baby-friendly hospital accreditation status by the Mount Hope Women's Hospital in June 2023 and the Sangre Grande Hospital in November 2023. This accreditation highlights that both hospitals have implemented the WHO and UNICEF 10 steps a successful breastfeeding program in order to encourage and better support breastfeeding mothers and their babies. Breastfeeding at birth, those rates have moved from less than 10% in 2015 to between 80 and 95% at all public maternity units. In alignment with that achievement, the Ministry also established lactation rooms at all regional health authorities and at the Ministry of Health's new corporate headquarters. In order to promote healthy lifestyles among youths and to give children a fighting chance to healthier living for generations to come, the Ministry executed a number of initiatives nationally. These include the purchase of gym equipment and sporting items for 624 schools and 13 youth centers, and the engagement of the fast food industry to develop healthy food options for our population with the aim of reducing the consumption of foods high in salt, sugar, and fats. The Ministry of Health, in its quest to prioritize the population's well being, launched a series of gender based health initiatives in the promotion of health and wellness for women the Ministry offered an array of activities for its Women's Health Initiative, which took place from March 6 to March 13, 2023, in recognition of International Women's Day, a testament to our dedication to the well-being of the women in our population. It was with great fulfillment that we rolled out the first Men's Health Initiative in July of this year, aptly titled, It's About Him, a health initiative for men. The primary goal was to increase awareness on prostate cancer, a significant health problem for men worldwide. Over 4,000 men were screened, with 3,306 of them receiving PSA tests. While many screenings returned normal results, 464 cases with abnormalities required further investigation. Additionally, on September 12, 2023, the Ministry held its first ever national symposium on menopause. The symposium allowed for all stakeholders to engage in positive dialogue on the issue of menopause and aging. For 2023, we noted another significant achievement as no maternal deaths have been recorded to date, either directly from pregnancy or medical illnesses complicated by pregnancy. 
the maternal mortality rate remains in line with the sustainable development goal of under 70 maternal deaths per 100,000 for 2030. The Ministry has ensured that its strides towards improved mental health services continue unabated with the decentralization of mental health services at the community level. The Ministry of Health continues to update and expand Find Care TT, the digital directory of crisis and emergency mental health services. With over 30 service providers, the public can be assured of easy access to mental health services. Further, the Ministry of Health recently concluded its art exhibition titled Oasis, Art as Therapy, aimed at showcasing how art therapy can be used in conjunction with pharmaceutical and psychological treatment for persons with mental health disorders and challenges. For the year 2023, we'll continue to address the issue of blood inequity by repurposing the national blood donation system. The revision of the national blood donation policy places emphasis on developing a blood donation system that is voluntary to ensure a safe, reliable, equitable and accessible service of blood and blood products. HIV and AIDS remain a strategic focus of the Ministry of Health towards the achievement of the global 95, 95, 95 targets for HIV AIDS, whereby 95% of persons with HIV should know their status. 95% of those people who know their status should be receiving treatment and 95% of people on treatment should achieve viral suppression. We have made substantial steps towards achieving this goal in 2023. Looking ahead, the Ministry, through its HIV AIDS Coordinating Department and the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, will continue to work towards ending AIDS as a public health issue in Trinidad and Tobago. The Ministry of Health has also realized notable infrastructural development projects with the completion of the Ministry of Health's corporate headquarters. The new administrative building is fully operational and all administrative services and departments of the Ministry are within one building, allowing for greater efficiency through collaboration and streamlining of operational services. For this achievement, we are most proud. As I close, I encourage you to continue to be proactive and practice sound health-seeking behavior. As your Minister of Health, I will pursue all the necessary policy-driven measures to continue to build a public health system that is resilient, responsive, and customer-focused in support of national development and towards a healthy Trinidad and Tobago. Global trends reveal a continuing threat to the safety of citizens, with 83% of the world's population living in conditions of high criminality, and Trinidad and Tobago is not immune to these challenges. The situation calls for a collective response based on informed, practical strategies, and the Minister of National Security updates us on the relentless efforts of his ministry in safeguarding the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, as we close the curtains on 2023, it is important to reflect on what we have achieved at the Ministry of National Security. Our security framework is multidimensional and imbued with an approach that embraces bilateral and multilateral engagement, as well as robust local law enforcement. Border security remains our top priority, our first line of defense. We have secured best-in-class technology in the purchase of two Cape-class patrol vessels. We have acquired handheld, stationary, and mobile scanners for our seaports and airports so that our customs division 
and other border protection agencies could function effectively. Deploying our interagency units, such as AIRCOP and CCOP, allows for our collaboration and work with regional and international partners to provide training and equipment, as well as share intelligence with our officers. We are seeing tremendous results. For 2023 to date, we have launched 1,137 coastal patrols, 1,956 targets of interest were identified. There were 286 interceptions, 90 search and rescue operations, 37 medical evacuations, and in this year, three vessels were seized. All of this from operations of the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard. But in addition, our Coast Guard working with a joint interagency task force in the region routinely intercepts vessels at a rate of sometimes 15 per week, yielding tons of cocaine and other drugs on a weekly basis. Narco trafficking remains a major problem. Through continued relentless efforts, we have disrupted several major drug trafficking networks leading to significant seizures of narcotics and arrests. Perhaps our biggest achievement in this year was our recording of the first conviction in a human trafficking matter. What the female survivor in that matter endured at the hands of her trafficker was heinous, but this was eclipsed by her courage to fight back, along with the efforts of our police other law enforcement agencies, and of course, the judiciary to secure justice on her and society's behalf. Since then, we have arrested and charged five other persons for human trafficking offenses. Altogether, we have charged 12 persons for human trafficking in year 2023 to date. The illegal trade in small arms and light weapons continue to pose a serious threat to our national security. We have implemented stringent measures to prevent the flow of these weapons. These measures include enhancing our arms control policies and ensuring that our law enforcement agencies have the necessary tools and training to address this critical issue. To date, we have retrieved some 686 of these weapons, 76 of them in the month of November alone. We have tackled head-on the transit sheds and bond warehouses, which have been known to be used in this illicit activity. We have considerably improved our use of science in the fight against crime. Whether it is in ballistic testing, DNA analysis, toxicology, or post-mortems simpliciter, we have improved. We have increased the number of men and women in your service by ongoing recruitment and training and by the hiring of retired personnel to provide their accumulated experience and support. We have increased the visibility of our officers on the streets and in communities, and we have deployed more Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force personnel into the arena of this anti-crime fight. Our focus is on presence, response, and deterrence. We are working more closely with our neighbors through CARICOM Impact the Regional Implementation Agency on Crime and Security, the Firearms Roadmap, the CARICOM Gang Intelligence Unit, and the CARICOM Arrest Warrant are products of this collaboration. I look forward to 2024 as more fruits of our work 
in 2023 become manifest. On behalf of my family and I, as well as the entire national security family, I wish you and yours a safe and blessed season and indeed a prosperous new year. I thank you. We all know that the Ministry of Public Utilities plays a critical role in the everyday lives of the people of Trinidad and Tobago by ensuring that we all have some of the most basic needs like electricity and water. Minister Marvin Gonzalez updates us on the work being done to transform the sector and the delivery of improved services throughout Trinidad and Tobago. My fellow citizens, the last year has been as challenging as it has been rewarding for those of us who work in the public utility sector. We in the Ministry of Public Utilities, along with the various agencies that we provide governance to, are fully aware of the critical role that all services play in the day-to-day -day lives of everyone who lives and works in Trinidad and Tobago. It is this understanding that fuels our motivation to positively transform the public utility sector so that these essential services cannot only meet the current demand of the population, but provide the impetus for future growth and development. Such a transformation must, by necessity, be implemented at a number of levels, from the policies that provide the framework for strategies and operations to investment in new technologies and infrastructure. And these developments have all been happening simultaneously as we strive to move the needle as it relates to the quality, reliability and accessibility of our various services. Some of these policies that we have developed over the past year include the National Integrated Solid Waste Resource Management Policy 2023, the National Recycling Policy and the Beverage Container Deposit Return Policy. Once implemented, these three documents will positively transform the solid waste management sector into a more sustainable one that enables the reuse recycling and management of waste in ways to minimize harm to our environment and to ourselves while fueling economic activity and the development of new enterprises and initiatives. In the electricity sector, we turn the sod for the construction of a major solar generation project being undertaken by Shell and Lightsource BP, which will supply approximately 10% of the country's energy consumption and reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the power generation sector by approximately 150,000 tons annually. The Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission also completed the Gandhi Union 220 kV circuit, which will facilitate the transfer of bulk power from Trinidad Generation Unlimited TGU power plant to the national grid, thus improving the stability and reliability of the electricity supply nationwide. The water sector was not exempted from this transformation process. As many of you would be aware, the National Integrated Water Resources Management Policy was approved by Cabinet in November 2022. This past year, we set out to implement many of the programs and strategies outlined in that document. Additionally, in March of this year, the government secured the financial support of the Inter-American Development Bank for the implementation of the National Water Sector Transformation Program. That program aims to improve the efficiency, quality, sustainability, and resilience of the portable water supply service and water security in Trinidad and Tobago against the backdrop of climate change and increasing climate variability. It focuses on urgently and effectively upgrading and managing the production, transmission and distribution infrastructure, reducing water losses and deploying innovative technologies and data-driven management systems. Two other water improvement programs that have provided relief 
to thousands of citizens in communities all over Trinidad and Tobago is a community water improvement program commonly known as CWIP and the National Stabilization and Improvement Program. Under these programs, many communities received water for the very first time and in other cases, the infrastructure was laid down for a more reliable supply to many homes and families. Meanwhile, in Tobago, the Hillsborough Dam was finally desilted, restoring its original capacity of 225 million gallons of water and ensuring a more reliable and sustainable water supply to approximately 15,000 citizens from 13 communities in southwest Tobago. The government has constructed numerous booster stations on the sister island, including the drilling of additional groundwater wells and the installation of new transmission pipelines. We have also made great strides towards improving the capacity of the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Services to provide accurate and timely weather information to the population. Just last month, we acquired a geostationary operational environmental receiving system, which allows for more accurate and timely weather forecast, as well as better understanding of long-term conditions. Civil and structural works have been completed at the Doppler radar tower at Brasso Vernado, readying it for the installation of a new radar system within the next three months. In addition to this, a new radar system will be procured in 2024 to add further resilience to the system and will be utilized if the main Doppler radar becomes non-functional or has to undergo offline for maintenance. We will also soon start the construction of a brand new state-of-the-art headquarters for the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Service, which will house almost all of its operation, thus improving its efficiency and allowing for the expansion of the services it provides. Our national mail carrier, the Trinidad and Tobago Postal Corporation, made progress in the expansion and improvement of its services to the general public as well as the preservation of its legacy. One program which speaks to the latter objective is the restoration of historic buildings owned by the corporation to their original architectural condition and the resumption of postal functions at these restored facilities. That project, called the Legacy Building Restoration Program, will restore 13 facilities across the country. My fellow citizens, this is just a snapshot of the many interventions and initiatives that were carried out this past year and that are continuing into the new year with the overall aim of serving you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, in a more impactful, reliable and sustainable way. We in the public utility sector, we look forward to the continued transformation of these services in 2024 and we wish you all the blessings of the season and a new year filled with a sense of hope, purpose, and joy. Merry Christmas and a bright and prosperous 2024. Thank you for watching. Join me as we wrap up 2023 in our next episode of Government Year in Review 2023.